Hello, I'm Kelly O'Byrne and welcome to LCG's preview for the week ahead. I'll be talking to our head of research, Jasper Lawler, to discuss the rebound in the stock market, inflation expectations leading into the Fed minutes, the Bank of England inflation hearings and Eurozone CPI data, as well as rising bond yields and a jump in gold prices. But first, with some prominent UK bank earnings on tap this week, let's take a look at some releases. We'll have earnings from Reckitt Benkheiser on Monday, then BHB Billiton, HSBC, Intercontinental Hotels, AutoZone, Domino's Pizza and Walmart on Tuesday. On Wednesday we have Orange, Barrett Developments, Lloyds, Glencore and Pandora. On Thursday it's BAE Systems, British American Tobacco, Centrica, Anglo-American, Barclays, Hewlett Packard and Herbalife and we end the week with Pearson, RBS, Rightmove and William Hill reporting on Friday. And moving on to the economic calendar, it's President's Day on Monday so it's a quiet day. But on Tuesday there's the RBA meeting minutes, the Bank of England inflation hearings and the German ZEW. On Wednesday there's PMIs from France and Germany, UK unemployment and the FOMC meeting minutes. On Thursday, German IFO, UK GDP and ECB meeting minutes. Then we finish with Eurozone CPI on Friday. So Jasper, stocks rebounded last week. Have we seen the bottom? That's the big question, Kelly. I wish I knew the answer, but it, the markets behaved very strongly. We had five days up in a row, I think, at one point. So I was always expecting a fairly volatile range after we had that initial sell-off. I don't think an immediate drop of another 10% was ever really on the cards. Obviously, it could have happened. Equally, um, we haven't quite, we haven't immediately rechallenged the highs. We, you know, we've had a few good solid up days, but we haven't made up the, the, all of the ground yet. So we're in this volatile trading range. Um, I know I mentioned in the last video that uh, we might need a, a test of the 200 day moving average in the Dow. Actually, as it happened, we tested the 200 day and the S&P 500. And I think that was maybe enough for the market um, to kind of consider that there's been a bit of a reversion to the mean. So then there's, you know, hence we've seen some dip buying behavior going on afterwards. And I think maybe one of the other dynamics has changed a bit is that we had the, um, the US CPI data and that's changed people's opinions a little bit on inflation and the impact it's going to have on markets. Mm -hmm, yeah. And with inflation, it's obviously a big theme at the moment. And mm. there's three things coming up. We've got Fed minutes, the BOE hearings and data coming out of Europe as well. Yeah, exactly. And they all have sort of inflation somehow at their core. Obviously, it was the, the wage data from the US that caused the sell off because we thought that might lead to, to higher inflation and mm -hmm. the Fed would have to raise rates as a result. Um, actually, we saw higher than expected inflation from the US, but the unusual reaction was that the dollar actually sold off. And we saw that 15-month high in, the, in, the, um, in uh, the yen, for example. So I think maybe we've changed it up a little bit so that if there's a global reflation trade going on, then actually it's the, it goes back to the same idea that we've talked about loads of times. That it's, it's actually... Um, the other central banks that need to reverse course a lot more than the Fed. The Fed are already gradually raising rates. They may be able to do it quicker, a bit, you know, a bit slower. Um, their path is sort of known. It's the ECB and the Bank of Japan uh, that really need to adjust to this higher inflation. And we've seen, uh, we also see the, the uh, UK, UK inflation pick up. And obviously we had those inflation hearings. So I'm expecting Mark Carney, probably in a sort of caveated way, to basically reiterate that, yeah, we're seeing higher inflation in the UK and the Bank of England needs to um, moderately up the pace on when it starts raising, uh, of how quickly it raises rates. And uh, likewise, we've got this e uh, Eurozone CPI data. Um, the ECB are slightly behind the curve, I think, at the moment. And at some point, we're going to have that crunch meeting where Draghi really admits um, that actually, yes, um, the QE program is, is going to be off the table. Um, and we're not going to be doing it anymore. Yeah. Um, and so when that finally happens, that's when we see a real rip in the euro. It's already trading higher, but I think the markets are just setting themselves up for when that crunch meeting comes. Um, and, uh, and obviously we've got the Fed minutes, but we've sort of, we already know the sort of US inflation picture. So in many ways, the, the Fed meeting happened before all the, the market crashed. So they're, they're probably a little bit dated, actually. Okay, yeah.
Um, I also wanted to ask you about bond yields as well. Um, what does this mean for stocks and currencies and gold? Well, yeah, I mean, I think the relationship to gold is one of the more interesting ones because um, typically, you know, when inflation, uh, if interest rates are heading higher, I um, mean, if bond yields are heading higher, then obviously you're earning, you know, those that you're going to be earning a, an interest rate, a higher interest rate. So it just makes gold, which doesn't earn any interest, that much less attractive. But because of that relationship, because of gold's relationship with the dollar, it, you know, obviously the dollar goes down, gold goes up normally. Mm -hmm. um, if we are going to see this renewed weakness in the dollar because all the other currencies are positioning for higher inflation, then gold can do well just purely on the back of this um, dollar weakness. Okay, right. And there are a lot of UK earnings this week, mm. um, but you're focusing on banks, right? Well, they're, when you're looking at the FTSE 100, they're just the biggest market cap companies, right? They really do drive the index. And so I think... The interesting, probably the more interesting quarter for these banks will be the next quarter because now they've had all this volatility from from Q1. You would imagine that would help their trading arms um, for the more international banks uh, that have actually been a drag over the past few quarters because of the low volatility. So that's going to be an interesting change up. They may reference that mm -hmm. um, in terms of their forward guidance. So their forward guidance for Q1 actually may be what drives these results. Uh, rather than the look back. But I think even when you're looking back at Q4, it's going to be the more international banks that I think fare the best, HSBC, Barclays for, uh, for two, because they benefit from this globally rising rate scenario, and that's good for net interest margins for them. The more UK-centric banks, obviously a bit exposed to Brexit, if you believe that's a headwind. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly for me, there's Clearly a bit of a slowdown going on in the housing market. Um, there's less transactions taking place, less mortgages being taken out. And so that mortgage business is not going to be as healthy as it once was. Yeah, OK. Thank you so much, Jasper. And thank you all for watching. If you wish to catch these videos as they're released, please follow LCG on social media.